Hello and welcome to Literary Gladiators. Let's meet today's participants. I'm Cindy. I'm Tara. I'm Ari. I'm Charlie. And I'm Josh. And today we're going to be talking about what have we been reading as of November of 2024. So, let's get right into uh, what we've been reading. Uh, as it stands, we're in between seasons, so we're a bit more uh, selective reading what uh, we choose to read rather than what's on the schedule. Uh, so, let's start with you, Cindy. Okay. Uh, I am actually reading Nicholas Sparks' book, The Notebook, which I've seen as a movie twice, and did I ever read the book? No. It's lovely, and I'm enjoying it so much. Interesting. Because, uh, uh, I would have thought, I mean, a lot of people that have jumped into Nicholas Sparks have already read. Uh, have you read anything by him before? I usually don't know. I, I love the movie, and I've only just starting to read his books. Okay. So I thought since I had seen the movie and enjoyed it, um, mm -hmm. and because I am writing romance genre right now myself, my first fiction is romance. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, let's start with something that I'm familiar with, and something that I already know I will enjoy, but something that I did not read, and I am shocked. But I never picked it up. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, it'll be uh, interesting to hear uh, ultimately uh, what you thought and uh, if you choose to read more by him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Okay, okay I read, um, just recently I finished Counterfeit by Kristen Chen, and it's about um, Asian culture. Um, and also it's about how like she gets into the handbag counterfeit ring in that story and then i read the third uh, misborn series by Brandon sanderson which is called the hero of the ages i won't say anything more because it's in like the end of the series and i read um william by mason cole it's an ai and it's different that's what oh. I'm going to say about it. Hmm. And then I read a short story. It is called Wickley Sweet, and it's a romance. Okay. Not closed door. Hmm. And then um, I read Red in the Tooth and Claw by M Lush McBride. And that was really interesting. It um, takes on, it has like war and um, sp like spells, and it has like it's like old west, but not not exactly western. If that makes sense, and it's, it was really good. I liked it. Um, I recommend people read it. It's really cool. Have quite a nice list. I know that you uh, you go through a lot. And you, I do. You, you get <laughs> I read you a get lot. a lot accomplished pretty quickly. I, I I merge read a lot, so I audiobook and physically read or um. Even. I wish I was better with merge reading because uh, I know uh, when we get. When, when it's my turn, I'm, uh, there's something that I'm, I, I'm starting, I'm going to probably put it down to read something else. Uh, usually, I'm best at going through one thing at a time, but mm -hmm. I know for discussions, I will dip in and out, especially since a short work I can accomplish in a short period of time, and a short story I'm told. Yeah. 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 yeah, I did one that was done in October, I didn't really realize I went kind of far. <laughs> Sorry. But all the other ones were in November, so. Okay. I know, Ari, you were looking forward to sharing your list. Yeah, so a couple of works that I've read, I'm going through the last couple of months because I, obviously when it, with working at school, it's kind of hard to find the time to read a book. <gasps> even though I work in a library. Yeah, and me too. But um, uh, something, I, I've reread two different books. The first one I'm, I'm currently rereading is The Shallows by Nicholas Carr. I figured okay. that that Shallows. would be one. The Shallows. Oh, I think you said The Shallows. Like, the Shallows, yeah. what the internet is doing to our brains. To our brains. brains, yeah. That's what I'm currently rereading because I really was hoping that we would get an offer season 17. Wait to see if we find out if we get it. But um, the uh, interesting thing is that it's just, it's so relevant to this period of time right now. And that's why I wanted to reread it. I'm also reading the third in a trilogy called the Blight Harbor series. It's very Neil Gaiman-y. Uh, but it's it's by an artist named Laura Senf, 
Um, she wrote a book called The Clackety, which I really enjoyed, and then the second one in the series was The Night Housekeeper, which won the, the Bram Stoker Award for that year. And um, the one that she just released in late September, I'm actually still reading it, it's called The Loneliest Place. And it's like a culmination of the other two books put together with the Clackety returning and a bunch of other things. But I don't want to spoil anything, but if you do like supernatural stuff, mm -hmm. and you do like um, Neil gaiman -y kind of type of stuff, and if you're looking for a relatively new artist, I would suggest the Blight Harbor series by Laura Sen. I will, I do want to look into the Clackety at some point, because mm -hmm. uh, you had said a lot of good things about it. Yeah, it was, it was a great book, and then um, I'd say the, uh, the Night House Keeper was okay. It was very different, um, but it was still part. You still have to read them in order, but it was it had a different like uh, thing. But this one's like a combination and a culmination of both of the plot points in both books combined. So it it's, it definitely feels like a resolution so far. But I'm not finished it yet. Okay. So when I do finish it, I'll make sure to let you guys know about it. Is this a series you said? It is a is true. Okay. Yes. Nice. Okay. And. Um, the last thing I reread was um, H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Okay. I, I would like to reread that myself, because I read it back in high school, but uh, it didn't uh, really didn't grasp it as well as I probably could now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to throw a zinger in there, like I always do. I've been reading a lot of nonfiction, and I'm going to be honest with you. I actually get a lot out of it, because um, I love fiction, don't get me wrong. Um, Harry Potter is one of my favorites, um, and of course, St. Thomas the Tank Engine, he's a patron saint to me, but there's so much more out there, but um, lately I've been really honing in on nonfiction, and, a lot of, and I've had an interest in church history my whole life, so I've been reading about the early church and how a lot of things, thank God, have been abolished, and well, you know, just how we make some progress in some place, and, and we still have a long ways to go, I think. I'm not a scholar. By no means, but um, I volunteer at my church, and I see a lot of things, and make make your head make you scratch your head a little bit, um, hear things too. But anyway, um, and a lot of legal stuff. I've been working on some legal nonfiction. I'm trying to get into um, like uh, James Patterson. Their murder mysteries. It's mm -hmm. they are technically. I've read plenty. Yeah, Patterson. I've read a couple. <clears throat> yeah, he Not does. He's a there. phenomenal writer. I've read one of his works. Um, a couple years ago, I didn't get to finish it, but I'm going to pick it up and start it over again. Patterson's work, it's very, it reads very quickly. It does. Yeah. I know. We Patterson's the king of mystery, Agatha yeah. Christie's the queen, and you could probably find a couple of du dukes and, uh, <laughs> in there. I yeah. mean, with Pat it depends. I think Patterson is the, uh, the king of a certain kind of uh, thriller. Yeah, yeah. true. Uh, because, I mean, very short chapters, very accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Grisham, too. I read I reread The mm -hmm. Firm, and I think they just made a new movie. He's and more of a legal thriller writer. Right. And, uh, and for me, I, I went down a legal route earlier in my life. Um, there was a reason for that. Um, you know, nothing personal, but it was... I'm glad I did. And you learn a lot about the justice system, the injustice system, as they call it sometimes. You learn a lot, and um, how every day we take for granted, myself included, um, just going to work and how some people literally, I don't want to go into a whole dissertation now, but uh, going to work for some people is just an absolute nightmare. And coming home, same thing, because uh, you learn about the injustices that occur. And it makes you want to make some change. How can you? But, you know, you have to learn about it first. So, but uh, I want to reread... Um, um, what you said earlier, H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds. H.G. Wells, yeah. yeah. That's something I want to revisit. It's well. interesting because we just actually talked about the radio broadcast in um, yeah. our school's digital, I want to call it citizenship, it's not citizenship, it's literacy, digital literacy yeah, class, see? which is part of the library. Yeah. And it's like people who tuned in at 8.30 that evening would have thought there was actually an alien invasion going on because <laughs> they didn't hear the yeah. introduction to the Mercury Theater. And that's like... Yeah. What happens if you don't have all the information in something? That's how That's it pertains right. to digital yeah. literacy. It's mm -hmm. really interesting how they use that in class. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to say the same thing, too, about the legal world. If you don't have all the pieces, to, which is another reason, too. Um, I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer, but pick up a few um, civil rights books, uh, a few constitutional law books, and read about um, one thing I would impart on, this, on the re future reader. If you... By, by chance, a book about homelessness and poverty, pick it up, read it. it you'll be shaken to your core, and it, you'll probably want to make some change out there. Mm -hmm. 
So um, that's why I really took that route. And again, you know, it, it's an eye-opener. So, but um, yeah, and right now I'm working on a, a, bi or a, bi a, I'm sorry, a biography written from 1950 uh, called Crematorium. And it's really, you're writing that, or you're no, I'm reading it. Oh, okay. I'm reading it. Um, I was even working on it, but you were no, no. I'm, 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 oh God, no! I no. Uh, <laughs> it was copyrighted 1950. Mm. Um, it's not going to go into it too much, but it's about what ha a very nasty stain that happened in history and a horrible atrocities that took place and um, why I always always. Take, never take for granted what some people went through, and uh, I would recommend that as something for you, somebody who is also a history major or who has an interest in history, because we don't want to repeat that mistake. I think a lot of you can mm -hmm. infer what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry if I made anyone uncomfortable there. You know, I like to. Have a cookie. Yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The uh, oh, already. <laughs> The, uh, uh, I actually brought the works that I uh, am currently reading and will be reading. Uh, I uh, am currently reading The Stand by Stephen King. Mm, another uh, Stephen King. I is wanted, that a new one? Or? This, no, is, old. this is one of his oldest. This oh. is the fourth one that he wrote as Stephen King. Are you rereading it, or is it the first time you're reading it? This is my first time. Oh, so you haven't read all the Stephen King. I yet. have not read all the Stephen <laughs> King, but I would like to at some point during my life. <laughs> and then I'm going to begin reading Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain for mm -hmm. a uh, the uh, monthly Mama Millennials book club that I'm part of. Uh, I enjoy uh, dipping into as well. Uh, this is uh, my sixth meeting with them, and uh, we have really great insightful mm -hmm. discussions. Uh, Literary Gladiators is still number one, yeah. but mm -hmm. uh, monthly Mama Millennials is uh, a number two. I like to come well. visit. Is that so, one of your silent book clubs? No, the silent book clubs uh, are silent. different. We just bring whatever we want to those. Huh. Is there eating involved? Yeah, because it's at a cafe. <laughs> so, and then I also, when I'm finished with those, I have this stack from the mock Newberry list on Goodreads. You can tell Josh has a, a lot of not reading. reading. He likes books. Reading. We I all would reading. like to. I'd like we to take on this stack, uh, and then uh, talk about them on the channel. Oh, so this book right here, Ferris, I just, I, I'm also planning on reading that one. That's a Kate DiCabello book. It's, it is strongly up for consideration for Newberry. Uh, these yeah, are it all... should be. I've heard very good things about it. It's actually one of the books I'm planning on reading come December, January, because we just recently got it in our library. I did read The Tale the of Despero. I really didn't care for it. Did you read Because of Winn-Dixie? That's the I one that I know it. most I like, about, but I did not read it. But I like the Tale of Despero. I do. I do like Tale of Despero as well. Me too. I really didn't care for. But the one my stack includes "Light and Air" by Mindy Nichols Wendell, uh, "The First State of Being" by Erin Atrada Kelly. So remember the book I was I I wasn't able to do, but there was a book called "You Go First. That was the Scrabble oh, gee, book I was mentioning. Okay. That was also by Erin Atrada Kelly. She's she is an a up and coming uh, author, right and now. she has won the uh, Newbery Medal uh, specifically for Hello Universe. Yep, yeah. Hello Universe was a book that um, Kate was popular a couple of years ago. I never read it, but I know the kids were really into it. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a good thing. Uh, this is Ferris by Kate D. Camillo. I'm gonna read that. Yeah, I um, read it too. Max in the House of Spies by Alan Gidwitz. So this is another one that we have in the library. And if you, I work at a um, library in New Jersey that is in a school, so we have a lot of the uh, young adult and kids books in there. If they're up for Newbery Medal, if they're considered for Newbery Medal, uh, I would hope they'd be in your library. Yeah, well, we have, I mean, we... We have a lot of the more recent popular books, but we also have stuff like Dog Man and Entire of a Wimpy Kid. Okay. Here's uh, The Night War by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. She is also a, uh, she's a Newbery Honor winner. Uh, she got it for The War That Saved My Life and uh, Fighting Words. Who won the Newbery last year? Uh, Eggers. Dave Eggers. <laughs> I was just testing you on that one. Okay. The Eyes and the Impossible by Dave Eggers. Uh, this is Louder Than Hunger by John Shu. Oh my god, Alan Gratz is on your list too? And Heroes by Alan Gratz. You have a great list here. You're going to love most of these books. I have not read most of these, but the kids have been telling me like so many good things about these books. About heroes, about 
uh, I was about to say Crenshaw, Crenshaw's Captain Applegate, Applegate. Um, Ferris, <clears throat> and about some of the other books you had. I'm impressed by how uh, immersed that they are. Uh, it's great to read it. And, and yeah, these are like the third to seventh graders that are reading these books approximately. Okay. Yeah, last year I I had a great uh, I had I read seven of them as well from the, the last year's Mockingbird list uh, and the least the lowest rating I gave was three and a half stars. I think Alan Gratz also did Grenade, I think. Didn't he do that one as well? The refu uh, refugee, refugee was degrees. another one. Two degrees is another one. I can't remember all the books it's he did. In the beginning where their list is. I checked the beginning where the But list yeah, Alan Gratz is very popular yeah, amongst the fifth grade and sixth grade boys in my school right now. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I work right. in the public library system too, and and you, you got kids that want to. They want to come well, up. They come up. And I, don't, they say, I don't work in a public library. Well, no, I know, but still, they come up to you and they want they want something. Um, and you and I've never even heard of it. I'm like, yeah, sure. Let me, you know, I'll help. I'll either myself or I'll do work from the children. <laughs> that's, that's what I gotta do. Yeah. That's my. I, that's, I use something called Destiny Discover to mm -hmm. find okay. uh, books for the kids that we have a catalog in our library. But that's okay. for another video. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about it's, it wait. when I was on uh, Betwixt the Books' is, uh, reading roundtable. I was doing last year's stack uh, and uh, I was saying how much I enjoyed what happened to Rachel Riley. Uh, <clears throat> Dan Santat's uh, memoir. Uh, oh, first time for everything. Uh, Did you ever get down to reading Eyes of the Impossible yet? Not yet. You should read that. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, when Sea Becomes it. Sky. I mean, if you're going to read this, yeah. these Newberry books, you really should probably yeah. also check out Eyes of the Impossible because it mm -hmm. was last year at Newberry and it was mm. really, really... I, did, I also did an individual video on Eyes of the Impossible in my uh, playlist if you want to check it out. The only one that uh, the only one that I had that was uh, on the list was uh, oh the only the out of the seven the only one that actually made uh, was a new bar Barry Honor was uh, Simon Sword of Sass. Mm -hmm. and that was not one of my favorites out of the seven. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think you'll just like Eyes of the Impossible because it has a lot of animals in it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to definitely. Uh, I'll look into that one, uh, and and I think and I like things that are uh, creative and uh, ha -ha -hoo. like that. So uh, I want to. Uh, was it, anybody else want to say anything about? Uh, well, I will say this too. I I'm a musician, a drummer. Believe it or not, drummers can read. I read sheet music, <laughs> and <laughs> um, I've been also um, catching up on the latest first aid manual because. I'm not going to go down um, a tangent here, but it's good to know basic first aid, especially if you're someone like myself. Um, but anyway, yeah. yeah. Always good to learn first aid, CPR. You never know when you're going to need it. You could do CPR on yourself. Wait, no. You can do uh, the Heimlich. Heimlich, yourself. Yeah. Already. CPR on mm. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you all for tuning in to our What Have You Been Reading video, and uh, if you'd like to share with us what you've been reading, please uh, let us know down below, and uh, we'd be happy to continue the discussion with you. Be sure to join us for some more videos. We have plenty in store, uh, and we have a 16th season on the web. For now, and as always, we encourage you to keep reading. Keep reading.